you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, that's enough. <laughs> when it comes to Twitter, he's no quitter. As anyone to the right of Che Guevara knows, Twitter, prior to Elon Musk, had become the bullhorn of the woke, disseminating and amplifying mob-driven antipathy toward anyone who didn't genuflect before the altar of divisive identity politics. As most people could see, they used to censor conservatives a lot. True, on Twitter, the right were less popular than the veggie tray in Lizzo's green room. <laughs> Damn. They even threw the hilarious Babylon Bee off the site. The Babylon Bee, a satirical outlet. Did the free speech mavens come to its defense? Nope. They saw the bee as an enemy because it rightly made fun of them. And so if you tweeted something that went against the prevailing liberal left opinion, you were banned like Bill Hammer from a nude beach. <laughs> Can't say they blame him. Anyway, X, formerly known as Twitter, claimed that they didn't censor anybody because that's what hardcore leftists do. They stifle dissent and then they lie about it. And they would have got away with it too if if it wasn't for that meddling billionaire. Elon Musk paid 44 billion bucks and turned Twitter into X and explained why he did it on Joe Rogan. The degree to which Twitter was simply um, an arm of the government was not well understood by the public. A state publication is the way to think of old Twitter. It was a state publication. Republicans were suppressed at 10 times the rate of Democrats. Interesting, but what was what was, what was it that ultimately led him to make the decision to do it? Was he worried that it was having a corrosive effect on civilization? What was it ultimately that led you to make the decision to do it? <laughs> I was worried about that, that it was having a corrosive effect on civilization. If you've walked around downtown San Francisco, right near the ex-FKA Twitter headquarters, it's a zombie apocalypse. Now you have to say, well, what philosophy led to that outcome? And that philosophy was being piped to Earth. A philosophy that would be ordinarily quite niche and geographically constrained, so that the, the sort of the fallout uh, area would be limited. Hmm. First of all, I love what Rogan has done with his hair. <laughs> he looks like the one woman left after last call at your local Bennigan's. <laughs> That's not an insult. But Musk is right. He calls old Twitter an information technology weapon to propagate a mind virus to the rest of the earth. And that walking around San Fran shows you the results of that mind virus, the end of civilization. Because if you couldn't walk to work without stepping in a pile of human <laughs> and dirty drug needles, of course you'd want to share that utopia with the rest of the world. And in order for that mind virus to propagate, you must suppress opposing viewpoints. You need to silence the people who recognize how harmful your policies are. Censorship isn't a byproduct of leftism. It is leftism. Because if people can hear opposing ideas, they might think, you know, digging ditches in this gulag isn't as fun as they said it would be. Censorship and leftism, you can't have one without the other. Sort of like Brian Kilmeade in the men's warehouse. <laughs> Yeah, it's the only time they didn't like the way they looked. <laughs> Musk also said George Soros is trying to erode the fabric of civilization. If that sounds like hyperbole, then you haven't been to a city lately. And it begs for the comparison between these two billionaires. Soros used his vast fortune to target local races because he knew that's where his money could do the most damage, not in presidential races. The result, an end to bail, a rise in recidivist violent crime, and a decriminalization of everything from larceny to carjacking, turning once great cities into open-air petting zoos for junkies, thugs, and maniacs. Meanwhile, what it must do? Protect your freedom of expression, as opposed to limiting your freedom from crime. See, Musk understood how a small number of people could commandeer and enforce an ide ideology on a nation. He knew history. You don't need a majority to create tyranny, just a minority living in a five square mile block in Northern California. And now what, it, now what they try to do to Twitter is what Biden wanted to do, wants to do now with AI, get the same people in charge to get the same horrible outcomes. And if all that's too heavy for you, Musk reportedly plans to add a fully fledged dating component to the app next year. Mm, talk about hooking up with your ex. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> but do we really need another dating app? Frankly, I miss the days of getting to know someone the old-fashioned way. 
You know, when you stood outside their bedroom window for hours while they slept. <laughs> but the idea is all about making X into an everything app as he looks for ways to inject new cash flow into the company. Because it's now worth almost 65% less than when he bought it. So was he stupid for doing this? No, he was brave. This might be the biggest financial sacrifice anyone ever did on behalf of a country. But then again, he is worth $225 billion, so to him, $44 billion is like a haircut for Jesse Waters. <laughs> so no wonder he lets Joe Rogan shoot an arrow into the side of his brand new cyber truck. Tip of the arrow. This is going to be my next car. Because you never know the next time you'll be chased by Liz Warren. <laughs> that was a setup. As for Musk's comments on the evils of leftism, the only people scoffing at him are leftists, the ones who benefited from Twitter's censorship, namely mainstream journalists. A year ago, they predicted the company would collapse, and they were licking their lips like Jeffrey Epstein at spring break. And said the only thing that's tanked is the media's ratings. Their numbers are falling faster than Joe Biden on a treadmill. <laughs> yeah, maybe not all of Elon's moves so far have been great, but he's doing it for the right reasons. Musk believes in free speech, and if you don't believe it, just insult him. He won't block you, but he will mock you, and he certainly won't send the feds after you. <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guest. He's the inspiration behind the American Indian term paleface, Fox News contributor Tom Shalou. She talks about hoops and ticks off terrorist groups. Host of the Hoop Chat, Emily Austin. <laughs> to get on her good side, just throw her a handful of birdseed. New York Times bestselling author and Fox News contributor Kat Tim. Finally, his knuckle sandwich can feed a family of five. New York Times bestselling author, comedian, and former MWA world champion, Tyrus. <laughs> Tom, it's kind of interesting that this is what he would choose to spend his money on. What do you think of it? I love Elon Musk. I mean, I love the guy. He's, uh... He, he, he's like... A, he has every right to be an evil billionaire, but he's just not being one. It's yes. really amazing. And he's so open. He spent three hours with Joe Rogan. He'll go anywhere. He smokes cigars, talks about anything. Billionaires are very guarded. They won't give a three-minute interview. I'm more guarded than Elon Musk, and I'm only a thousandaire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you know what it is? He's like Bruce Wayne. Yes. But he doesn't need the costume. No, but he's having a ball, and I love it. And uh, I wish he didn't change the name of Twitter, but he makes mistakes. Like, Twitter was such a good name for the company, and then he changed it to X. I like Twitter because I like the way he says it. Twitter, Twitter. <laughs> yeah. I bought Twitter. I bought Twitter for $44 million. Uh, the, I just think he's an interesting guy, and it's a perfect contrast between him and George Soros, who, I mean, you never see him. He just hides like the evil villain that he yes. is. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, and the other thing, just you notice that he's referring to Earth. Like he said, Twitter was sending messages to Earth. Like he's already like on Mars. Like, yes. He already looks at Earth as just another place for him, mm -hmm. you know? And you know what? He's right. When you see how the world is going, ominous point. <laughs> Emily, how have you been uh, thinking about the Twitter dating app at all? I, I would be. I wouldn't, okay, I wouldn't join it because I would rather wait outside somebody's window at night. I think it's more like personal. Mm -hmm. But I would be really happy because it would primarily be conservatives because the left wants to boycott X. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think it's a bad thing for conservatives to start procreating. Maybe we can like have four or five, six children, build little conservative armies, start to outnumber the left a little bit. Because you know, they're not going to be on the app. So I would be really elated if he can do that. And conservatives could just, you know, like genetically have smarter kids. Mm. And then maybe Soros wouldn't want to um, destroy civilization. But if he was smart, mm -hmm. you'd be friends with Elon. You'd get on one of his rockets and you have like that F you money. You could move to Mars. You can like develop it. So if I were him, that's what I would do. Yeah, I wish I had a billionaire best friend. <laughs> oh, Elon, are applications open? Yes, it'd be amazing, Kat. Don't you wish you had a thousandaire best friend? <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
What do you make of, uh, let's, say, let's say Twitter's progress now. So he's losing a lot of money, he's losing advertising, but it's definitely, and there's a lot of misinformation on it, let's be honest, but it's actually feels like a good thing. Yeah, I, the dating thing, I don't know. I mean, you kind of already can do that. Yeah. I mean, anything, anything is a dating app if you're creepy enough. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> like, like DoorDash customer service. Like, <laughs> my food wasn't cold, but I am. <laughs> In bed at night. <laughs> Come over. <laughs> I wonder if that would work. <laughs> probably would. It probably would. Yeah, anything can be a dating app. So I don't even know, like, what would that mean, the, da yeah. the dating app on... I think he's just kind of trying stuff, mm -hmm. seeing what'll work, seeing what won't work. You can also already probably find someone to get you pregnant on Twitter if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> People yeah. offer me all the time and I'm not asking. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. All right, Tyrus, what, what are you looking at? <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm listening to everything. Please do not make that joke and call DoorDash. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna. But when they right show up at my house, I'll be like, what are you doing address. here? Yeah, because you staring at your phone going, oh, he's here, he's coming. I was joking. I was joking. <laughs> yeah. I was joking. No. Um, I, I've, you know, there's certain times in life where you like, you, you see somebody enough and you decide like, hey, I think I want to be friends with this guy. Mm -hmm. I think I want to be friends with Elon because I think I need to be one of the guys that texts him at two in the morning like, yo, buy Panama. <laughs> yes. Do it. Ask, you know, like, I think he's getting to the point now where he's starting to, like, have so much fun mm -hmm. being the, the, the hated cool guy. He's now wearing weird, his outfits are getting weirder. Yeah. You know, he's got an ascot and he's the cigar and he changes his accent from time to time. <laughs> he's having fun and, he, you know, he talks about Earth because he's already bought Mars. Yeah. You know, so, and I'm, you know, I just want to be able to text him, like, you know, when's, you seem to buy Antarctica. And let's see if we can turn it into a rainforest. Well, you know what the perfect example <laughs> is? He bought Twitter because he was mad that they banned and Babylon that's Bee. That's why I want to be friends with him. Yes. Like, to be at a point to when you don't like something. Like, yeah. if I'm watching CNN <laughs> and somebody pisses me off on there, I just call the account and be like, yo, buy all the stocks on CNN. Yeah. <laughs> buy it all. Do we have it? Cool. Uh, Tell Stelter he has to wear a clown suit every night on CNN and he's fired. <laughs> like, that's the stuff I would, yeah. I would do. And I feel like Elon would be the guy to call me like, yo, did you just make him wear a clown suit? Watch this. I'm buying ABC. Yeah. Wait till you see soap operas this week. No, like, I just feel like that's kind of cool. You know, have I, cool trips I would go be, on the moon. I would be so petty. Like, if there were a salesman or uh, somebody that upset me, I would buy the company so I could fire that person. <laughs> After you do the correction. Yes. After you make them feel like it's going to be okay. Okay, then you go. And then you bring them in. Yes. And crush their soul. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.